a second bath, the copper coating is further built up. In these baths, electricity flows through the solution between two poles, one a block of copper and the other the disk itself. When the current passes from the copper into the solution, it carries with it charged molecules of metal called ions, which are drawn to the disk and penetrate its tiniest recesses, taking the exact shape of the grooves made by the original sound vibrations, ensuring perfect fidelity of tone in the final record. From this furiously bubbling cauldron comes the master record. After the copper has taken the impression, the wax may be stripped away. This master matrix now could be used to press the final records, I was told, but it would not last long enough to turn out the millions of discs music lovers demand. Hence another disc, called a mother matrix, must be made first, and from that, stampers will be made to press the final records. When the master is finally stripped, the last traces of wax are washed away. The master matrix is carefully rinsed and scrubbed. Then it's given another electrolytic bath, this time of nickel, which I learned gives it a still harder outer coating. After this bath, the master is washed and dipped into a special solution that coats it with a fine film. Now into another copper bath, and this time the mother matrix starts to build up on the face of the master, taking the shape of the same grooves, capturing again the sweet tones of the flowing music. The double disc is now separated into mother and master, and the master matrix goes down to the treasure house of music to be preserved for all time, to take its place beside the works of the world's greatest artists. The mother matrix is thoroughly washed and cleaned and goes into a nickel bath to give it a more durable surface. After another washing and film coating, it goes into another copper bath where the stamping matrix starts to build up. The double disc bubbles in its bath until the tiny electrified particles of copper grow into a hard, strong coating and the plating is finished. Now the mother matrix and stamper locked face to face are separated. From the mother, additional stampers will be made so that many finished records may be pressed at one time. Before the stamper is ready to use, it receives a nickel plating and then another coat, this time of hard gleaming chromium to give it resistance enough to last through many pressings. The matrix is washed once more and now with other stampers, it will soon be ready to press the finished records. For still greater strength, the completed matrix is soldered to a rigid backing. For perfect contact with the hot backing, the stamper is heated with flame, protected with a chemically neutral blanket and pressed evenly into the hot solder. When the gleaming disc is removed from the press, it is ready for the next operation, the centering of the hole around which the finished record will revolve. This delicate mechanism centers the hole with meticulous precision and is checked by magnification. 
Looking through the magnifier, I saw the rotating grooves of the music itself caught on the record. Carefully, the technician centers the disc and with the lens, he checks again. With the position of the hole accurately determined, he drills it with infinite accuracy on dead center. Now the stamper is given a last washing so no speck of dust can make even the tiniest mark that would create the smallest false sound. On this revolving cleaning machine, I saw the disc receive its final polishing.